It's estimated that in Scotland, 13% of the population have ginger hair. Compare this with the world's population where 1-2% to 2 is thought to be redhead and redheads from ethnic minorities are even rarer. However, there is no concrete data and a distinct lack of research on the ethnicity behind those with red hair. A quirk of nature it might seem, but the heritage of those with the distinctive trait doesn't point to just one isolated corner of the earth. Parentage ranges from Brazil to Jamaica to Ghana. Both parents need to be carriers of the recessive MC1R gene in order for a child to be a redhead. So I wonder whether it had been passed down and across through centuries of human migration, the slave trade, and even Irish, Scottish, indentured servitude in the British Caribbean in the 17th century. During Cromwell's reign, thousands of Catholic Irish were deported to the West Indies or indentured servants, and quite a number of people from England's Celtic or Celtic fringe might have a sign such indentures more or less voluntarily. Stephen Palmeco, editor of the Caribbean, A History of the Region and Its Peoples, told me, Barry Starr, a, genus, a geneticist from Stanford University, took this further. Red hair carries in the Caribbean and Africa are for the most part due to migration or gene flow. After all, in countries with equatorial or sunnier climes, natural selection wouldn't exactly favor physical features such as easily harmed light skin. The last evidence I saw was that there was a strong selection pressure. Again, changes in the MC1 our gene that caused it not to work in regions with a lot of sunlight. Think Africa, Dr. Stark Star explained. This probably has to do with the pale skin that comes with red hair. This means that even if an MC1R mutation did spontaneously appear previously in African populations, as it did multiple times in Europe, it did not spread and eventually petered out. Dr. George Busby from the Wellcome Trust Center for Human Genetics agrees. He says that the red hand freckles is the likely result of the historical interaction between Europeans and Africans in the formation of the Caribbean populations, most notably with Brits as the Spanish and Portuguese went to South America. George states this might also explain why you occasionally see red hair on a black Caribbean person who has two black parents. By chance alone, it might be that they are both carrying a European mutation which has come together in this child. Most of Michelle, Michelle's subjects have been in the UK, though she's had a lot of issues in the US and some in mainland Europe. I've got the whole London on this, she laughs when describing her arm, army of spotters. She says, the reaction to her project has been overwhelmingly positive. The only thing is, a beautiful picture doesn't always relate what it's like to be different. There's a flip side to being different. It's not always accepted. Beautiful photo photography serves one purpose, but in the context of daily life, people may not have that reaction. And she's right. For me, growing up tall, mixed race with thick, frizzy ginger hair, and a predominantly white working class seaside town was not the ticket. At 13 years old, I was buying skin whitener cream from boots to pulverize the freckles. And at 14, during my slip knot phase at the turn of the millennium, was violently straightening 
my newly dyed black hair. Now, though I couldn't care less and relish being unique, one woman who has been in touch with Michelle says her 11-year-old sister is having a hard time because she doesn't fit in and that she's trying to persuade the youngster to take part in a project to boost her confidence. A lot of people have been feeling quite isolated, Michelle says. I got a message from one boy who said, I didn't realize there were so many of us. I've not even shot 50 people. But the fact that he was able to say a cluster of people that matched his identity and could relate to that is quite positive. Francis Johnson, a 24-year-old born and bred Bristolian, said, I never thought to think of myself as different to other kids, but I was chronically made aware of it at times through bullying, unfortunately, as some people just didn't understand my afro hair, my freckles and birthmarks. It also made me question a lot of times what I was about and the true meaning behind my makeup. My mother and her mother are both redheads with family deriving from Scotland through the Celtic or Celtic bloodline, you could say. But looking back deep enough to the ancestry of Celtic people, it could go as far back as the Viking era, the dancer and performer said. On my father's side, my grandfather was also pale, skinned and referred to as a white Jamaican with green eyes but prominent black features. Cor Cora Quayi, a 23-year-old creative and stylist, explained that growing up in Tunbridge Wells was good. It's a nice area, very white. I went to school with the same people from nursery through to primary and secondary school, so I didn't realize I was different in that sense, she says. Cora's sister and half-brother are also ginger, so the gene definitely runs down her Guanadian father's side at least. I never hated being ginger, to be honest, she adds. I have never been bullied or made to feel bad about it apart from this guy once at secondary school who shouted ginger at me on the bus and my friend hit him with a tennis racket and that was that. I have never and would never die it. I like my hair color. West London-born Rosemary Inson, 35, said I didn't like having red hair growing up. But I don't mind it now as I guess it's the main thing I'm complimented on. Most people assume I dye it, even people that have known me for years. Given the lack of research on the subject, it's impossible to establish the historical prevalence of ethnic gingers. Michelle's subjects are predominantly mixed race, which in the context of the UK's mushroom and mixed race population makes one think that we could only become more prominent. And there has never been a better time to be ginger, which is redhead. The only annoying thing, as Cora says, is that it's becoming fashionable. Take the new magazine dedicated to redheads, also called MC1R. It has just published its first English language edition profile on international redhead specific projects from Philip Gase, James Caseman, and Thomas Knights, the last of whom was behind the hugely successful Red Heart series which aimed to redefine the ginger male stereotype. Thomas has just also published Red Heart's first ever female calendar, which along with the sale of its male version, raises money for anti-bullying charities. Then there's Red Head Day UK, which now and his third year is taking place in London on 12 September. The previous incarnations were held in Manchester. The event states, Redheads have been ridiculed and tortured for too long. Literally, it's been centuries. So it's time that juniors make, made a stand. 
to have even got in a war ceremony happening on the day called the MOGOs. As for the photographic project, Michelle hopes to garner the interest of Genesis because she wants the science side to run alongside it. I want some facts so I can make a final statement, she said. She hopes to have an exhibition sometime in the near future, perhaps part funded by a Kickstarter campaign. I want to stir the perception that most of us have of a redhead as a white Caucasian individual potentially of Celtic or Celtic descent, she told VSCO earlier this year. While there seems to be an underlying Irish-Scottish connection to the MCR1 gene in the occurrence of red hair, I am not sure that being ginger still only means being Scottish, Irish, Welsh, or even 